So, first off, I want to explain this video. So, this video is a Spider X Shoto listener, in my case, reader. And this one kind of has a, another part to it, I think. It's later on. I'll probably put it in the same area as it. But I hope you guys enjoy. As I said, it's a Spider Shoto X reader. I'm just gonna say this again. All my, all the stories that I read are fantasy so far. So uh, yeah. And um, what else do I want to say? Oh, happy New Year's! I hope your year was a great one. And I, and if you didn't, I hope you have a better year in 2023. Bye, ya. Let's can start. This is a monster AU. The world fell into ruin when all. When the all-powerful All for One took over, took all over Japan, Ugh. he took control of everything, and whoever dared defy him would face a horrible fate. Once he had control, he shaped society the way he found entertaining. It's not like they could stop him. He had a large following that helped spread his rule and terror. Those who had a tr- transmitter or trans- transformation quirk, so basically you look normal, were safe. They were treated like people are held in stronger places. Those who had mutation quirks were called monsters and they were locked away. So, ooh, so all for one separated people. Those who were safe were humans, brainwashing them into believing they were better than those monsters. Those those who were mutated were treated like wild and and unpredictab- ugh, unpredictable animals. The monsters, they were mocked, humiliated, tortured, and locked away from the pretty cities and only human capitals. Some were unfortunate to be born with a mutation quirk, but some were forced to have this fate by all for one. By curing people with said quirks, some were criminals, rebels, or innocent to show ugh, to show his power. Those who are lucky just get their quirk taken and turn into a slave. What happened to those who were quirkless, you ask? Well, they were slaves. Just outside the grand capital, there was a large dome loomed over the forest. It covered 50 miles worth of land. Inside was a forest, river, rocky hills, cliffs, and caves. Inside were the monsters. This is where they were locked away and put into their natural habitat. Left to starve except for the occasional mouse that was let inside for them to feed on. With no other food, they are left with no choice as the mouse tries to run and hide from the monsters, hunt it down, and devour them. This hunt is recorded and broadcast all over the cities as a sick entertainment for the rich, powerful, and citizens. But for the quirkless slaves, or the mice, it is a form of warning to stay in line and know your place. I feel feel very uncomfortable reading this, but here we go. Oh, looks like our little mouse could not run that pack of werewolves, the... The command, uh, I don't know how to say this word, I'm sorry. I'm just going to say commander. Said with no much enthusiasm in his voice. Yeah, John, looks like he's dog food now, John's partner joked. All, the slaves all watch in horror as they watch their friend got eaten alive. The quirkiness, <laughs> what, were all in their cages and forced to watch the monitor as a constant reminder 
that soon that will be their fate to be a meal. A mouse were sent to die for entertainment. Oh, this got sad. <laughs> they ate a choco, a close friend of hers sobbed. I didn't know her personality, but she was really nice, a really nice girl. She didn't deserve to go out the way she did. I sat in my cage, trembling as I watched the ca- uh, cage ca- tar- carnage. Danky, Momo, Jiro, and Zero, and now Ochako. They were all the unfortunate mice picked. I survived another month, sadly. My luck ran out the next month. Ha ha, I don't know how to fucking do that. (laughs) This little rat will do, said a guard as he opened my, opened and quickly grabbed me. I tried to struggle and break free from him, but nothing. But something hard hit my back of my head. I blacked out. Welcome back, everyone. It's that time again. Our favorite little game of survival. Today, our lovely little mouse. This month is why it was Yin Lin. A bit of the bitty side. Could probably squeeze, squeeze tight spaces. She's a pretty face. It's sad. It's a wasted on a mouse. Well, place your bets now, folks. Who will she find herself being eaten by? John the host said with a laugh. I opened my I opened my eyes to see that I was in a forest. It seemed to go no, f- it go for on forever, but quickly realized I was, I was inside, the dome. <laughs> Jeff, sound the bell. John said. <laughs> As the sa- sound of air, the air horn filled the dome, I ran. I did. I didn't know where. I just ran into the forest. There was no point in banging on the door. No one was going to answer. So I ran through the forest till I saw a clearing, the same clearing where Chaka was eaten. I came to a halt right at the edge of the forest. I hesitate and. F- Ugh. And flash, flushed of a chocolate mangled body appearing in my head. Suddenly, I heard growling behind me. I turned to see a pack of werewolves. The leader was a shy, ashy blonde and spiky hair with blood red eyes. I slowly started to back away as he got, as he took a step forward. Sorry, nothing personal. We're just starving. And everyone needs to eat, a red-headed werewolf said, with a sorrowful look in his face. Kirishima, shut up. Let's just, <laughs> let's just make this quick. Before some other monster gets her, he s- said the leader. Bakugo, could you be a little more sensitive? Kirishima said bitterly. Yeah, well, your sensitive almost cast us off cost us last time Bakugo shot back while they were arguing I quickly made a run for it dying by werewolves is probably the worst way to go I could hear them give chase once they re- realized I ran I just ugh I, oh, beyond the opening field was tall grass I managed to lose the wolves as I came across wi- willow trees by a lake, I stopped there to take a break. Then I heard hissing. Looking up into the tree was a naga. If you don't know what a naga is, it's just basically half human, half snake. He had green hair and green eyes to match his green tail. He was skinny and malnourished, so didn't have the strength to put to move anymore. I quickly left that spot and kept looking till I came across a cave. It was night and I started to get dark. I went inside the cave. I I learned too late that I was in a hole in the ground three steps in. I fell into the darkness and blacked out. 
dark and lonely. That's what I would describe my life to be. A lonely spider in a cave. While the other people in the same weight of their next meal, I'm working on making my way out of this hell hold. As I continued to dig my tunnel, when I felt my webs vibrate, some something fell into my web. Slowly, I made my way over to the cave entrance, surprised to see an unconscious girl tangled in my webs. She had soft, silky, hair-colored hair and smooth, skin-colored skin. I slowly started to inspect her in- entirely. As I found, did I f- found mouse brand burned into her skin. Like me, a monster brand was burned on my side. I untangled her and placed her down softly on the ground. She felt so warm in my arms. I almost didn't want to let go. So I took her deep within the cave to hide her from the other monsters, but also to keep her with me. I slowly started to wake up as I sat and found myself in a cave. Looking down, I was sewing on some sort of silk thread or web. Actually, the whole room was covered in webs. I slowly started to stand and started to rip the remaining webs off me. Suddenly, I heard something crawling. Then I saw it. I don't know. A dipper? Ooh. So I never saw one before. He had half red and half white hair with a big burn on his left side of his face. All over his body were born, uh, born, uh, boar scars. And on the right side of his chest was the monster brand, brand, brand it, burned on his skin. Um, hello, I said as I slowly sat back up. He did block my only exit. Hello, I'm surprised you're not screaming or trying to escape. He said bluntly with a natural face. Well, you're blocking my only way, my only exit. And if I scream, no one's going to hear me. So, yeah, I'm Ian, by the way. I said as I held my hand out. Um, I'm Shoto the spider. I'm not going to say dipper every time. He said simply, slowly shaking my hand. So, um, why did you spare me? I thought you would be hungry like the other people up there. I said, looking up at the ceiling. Well, I have a slow metabolism, so it takes a while for me to get hungry. I I was just lonely. He said, with a light blush. Oh, okay. I'd be happy to accompany you, Shoto, I said with a smile. Shoto seemed uh, stunned at first, as he seemed to just stare at me for a bit. Suddenly, it seemed his eyes began to water. Then he pulled me into a tight hug. As he did, he stood up to his half height, which lifted me to my... uh, me a few feet off the ground slowly i slowly hesitated returning his hug his spider half looked like it was an albino version of a black widow yeah thanks willow as i started studied i could hear him smelling me it was weird but i didn't say anything suddenly i heard a buzzing noise i could hear them the humans f- flying species they were looking for yin gently placing yin down on the, the nest i went to investigate i saw the flying cameras i quickly ugh, quickly sneaking up behind it and quickly smashing it on a rock they weren't going to take my friend away from me as the weeks went by yin and shoto got closer and closer Yen would help Shoto with his tunnel, and sometimes Shoto would go out to the surface and bring berries for Yen. She She would clean up any wounds Shoto would gain 
As the weeks went on, Yin became more and more weak. The berries weren't enough to subside her. She could even afford to move or spend any energy, or she will starve even more. So in a desperate, Shoto worked on his tunnel even more, till he finally did it. He finally tunneled his way outside the dome. Quickly and quickly, he scooped Yin into his arms and escaped from this hell. Shoto traveled for days, getting as far from the city and the dome as possible. When they finally settled down high up in a tall tree, Shoto went down and hunted down a strong stag. Cooking it and feeding it to Yin, as time went on, Yin began to re- regain her strength. I slowly crawled down the tree with Yin in my arms. I was so nervous, always wondering if something would come and take Yin away. He fin- we finally made it t- to the ground. I let Yin down. She stood still for a while. Then she started to roll around on the ground with a wide smile. We're free, Shoto. It feels so good, she said. She exclaimed as she jumped up and hugged me. Ian, thank you for staying with me, even when you were so close to dying. I never want to lose you. And I treasure you, Yin, I said as I quickly pulled her into a passionate kiss. And I was happy. And I- and I was happy when she slowly melted into my kiss. This is my paradise. She is my utopia. So I want to say something before the video is over. I just want to say how uncomfortable it was reading some of this. Because one, I didn't know these words because I have a major dyslexia problem. So I don't have many words very great and all that so sorry if you couldn't understand me and um i hope you enjoyed and um happy new year's i hope you have a great year and um um i know people have been asking for a bakugo one and there is a bakugo one coming up no worries um i think hold up I think you'd be in either two or three. Ooh, how many more? Oh, damn, you got a long way to go. (laughs) You got, I would try posting more a week, probably like two times a week. And then like, I want to get more videos up for you guys because you guys are precious to me. And I want to say please like and subscribe because... I really like you guys, and I don't want to be the annoying YouTuber that asks for it. So, um, I hope you enjoyed. I know it's kind of boring listening to me ramble, but, um, bye!